Welcome Minier to, um, uh, to SOAS. So um, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Minier Rawnsley um, to, to kind of talk about her life in studying and promoting uh, Taiwanese uh, film. Um, Minier is a research associate at the Centre of Taiwan Studies. Uh, she's the Secretary General of the European Association of Taiwan Studies. Um, and she's, um, she's also the editor of this uh, brand new uh, journal, the International Journal of Taiwan uh, Studies. Um, and as she's um, come to London from, from Wales for uh, a couple of Taiwan film sessions, um, I thought it'd be a nice opportunity to, to just discuss with her about her, um, her, her kind of experiences with, um, with Taiwan film. So, um, so what I wanted to, to start off with, Mingye, was uh, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about how you first started researching Taiwan film, because um, for your PhD you were looking at television, so how did it, it first start? Right, okay. Um, I should say t um, cinema has always been my passion, more of an interest. Mm. Um, Taiwan cinema, uh, including as part of all the kind of the films I watched. Um, the my PhD is very much in media, so I'm also very interested in sort of generally audiovisual culture mm -hmm. um, and also the relationship between media and society. So yeah, when my husband and I were sent by University of Nottingham to the Nimbo campus to build it up, um, that actually was the crucial moment mm -hmm. that I decided to do a different topic. Uh, mainly it's because when I was in China, I failed to research um, Taiwan, especially about Taiwan media and politics, was a bit more difficult and mm -hmm. I wasn't very technical savvy at all. Okay. Um, that's why I find to, to navigate um, through firewalls and things like that is a bit hard. So I just thought I would try a, a softer topic. And obviously later on I realized this is also in some way a um, misunderstanding, right? You know, there's no real soft topic in, in a sense. Really depends on how you want to tackle uh, mm -hmm. any, any topic. But anyway, so that was the real moment. Actually, I thought I would start to look at films instead of a media and politics or democratization, that kind of a uh, dimension. So the first project I did is with Zhang Yimou's Hero. Oh, mm -hmm. um, so that really get me into sort of global Chinese cinema. Um, but within that kind of discourse, obviously Taiwan cinema is very much in the background, they're very much in it. Um, that also made me start to look at Taiwan new cinema a lot more. So when I came back uh, to the UK, um, after two years in China, um, my husband got a job in Leeds, so we moved to Leeds and went into uh, communication studies. So um, I was uh, approached by a colleague from a World Cinema to, to write a, a book chapter for them, and that's actually very much about Taiwan cinema. Mm -hmm. So it started from there. I then get deeper and deeper into Taiwan cinema. Started with Taiwan new cinema, but then actually obviously anything that after uh, Taiwan new cinema period too. Okay, so, you, so your interest in Taiwan film had already started before you came to study in the UK then? Yes. Mm, okay, and, and how has your research on Taiwan cinema have changed over time? Okay, so that's also very much to do with the issues that you start to be interested mm. in. So when I start to, you know, my first chapter or first research paper about how I knew cinema is very much look at uh, text analysis. Mm. So look at certain films and, um, and what kind of a, a themes they come out and then you try to ad address that. And that's obviously very satisfying. But also at the same time, I start to find they are a lot more to Taiwan cinema in addition to just Taiwan new cinema, right. even mm -hmm. though this was a very important cinema movement. So reflect on my own life experience. I've actually went through that period of Taiwan's democratization. Um, and for the scholars who look at democratization, always look at from politics or social change. And so when I start to think about cinema, I just thought that could be a another tool to help us understand the effect of democratization, especially about the cultural effect. Mm -hmm. You know, so how did democratization affect culture, but also maybe actually the culture um, has its own input into democratization itself. And I thought cinema was, a, was going to be a very good area for me to look at. And that's when I start to actually find 
uh, various materials. So a project I was planning to write is about uh, cultural democratization in Taiwan. Mm, yeah. Looking at Taiwan cinema as a kind of whole from the starting point of what we can consider um, as Taiwan cinema right up to today because I thought in my conception is actually you have to know um, what happened before democratization and what afterwards then you can really measure that uh, impact mm. or the effect I was going to talk about. Um, so with that kind of design then I start to really dig out um, things in the past and then gradually and also what happened today. So I think a lot of the new research materials also questions coming up from this and that's when I realized this, this project itself was too big okay. um, to be completed within a short time. And so I'm still, you can say, in the midst of this particular project. But certainly in terms of the, the prior to democratization, so when I start to search about the, the starting point of Taiwan cinema, or what is a, a, can be considered as Taiwan cinema, that um, kind of a launched me into um, Taiwan film history. That, mm. that, that type of research. So you got into that almost by accident then? Yes. Right, I see. Mm. Now one of the things that we've noticed, because um, we've been teaching Taiwan cinema now uh, for about 12 or 13 years or so, us. it's been um, one of our most popular um, courses, and I was wondering why, why you felt that this, um, Taiwan cinema has been so popular as a, as a, uh, uh, as a subject for students. Um, and uh, why, what is the, the attraction? Mm. I think actually that's to do with cinema itself, this medium. Mm. Um, it has so many dimensions that you can explore. And also, it's also a tool for uh, authors to express. Mm -hmm. So I think actually for, really depends on where you come from. You can look at social change. You can look at the, how the culture is reflected. You can also look at identity, formation and also expression and sometimes questioning and challenge. Um, and even actually the footage itself, sometimes they give you clues mm -hmm. about what society was like then. Um, so you can, you can study the film today from today's perspective, but you can also try to understand things from the past, mm -hmm. from today's point of view, or also you can probably try to go as close as you can be in the past by searching for the audience of the past or to keep, uh, looking at the archive. So there are so many different ways that films really weave into the, the soul of the society and the culture. Mm. And I think that's why there has so, such a vast material and also research angles that entice researchers and I think actually researchers' enthusiasm then also transpired and then get into the students. And obviously, you know, let alone about the filmmakers. Mm -hmm. The filmmakers, that's another strand of strength, a cultural strength. And I think because Taiwan's culture, uh, film culture today, why it was very difficult, especially uh, financially or in terms of distribution, still has a challenge, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have that freedom allow the filmmakers or any creators to be as authentic as you can mm. to touch a subject that actually to your heart. So I think is that sense of authenticity also help the viewers or the researchers or the students that they can try to get something that interests them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think that, that, that what makes Taiwan cinema such a, a sort of vibrant area mm -hmm. of study and as a continue pro proliferating. Yeah, I mean, what we find quite interesting is that often students who don't have a particular Taiwan interest uh, will study Taiwan uh, film. And similarly, I think for events, uh, we often find Taiwan film are the, some of the most popular um, events. And I've, I've also found myself using Taiwan film a lot more in, in uh, my writing about Taiwan politics. And I, a lot of my students are kind of quite used to me bringing in references to, to Taiwan film. I'm hoping that they're going to go on and, and watch these films um, uh, eventually. Um, now, one of the things I really admire about uh, what you've been doing over the last decade is the way that you've tried to bring um, Taiwan film to quite different audiences, audiences that aren't necessarily um, used to uh, Asian uh, film. And I was wondering if you could comment a little bit about the kind of audience response that you've, you've got to Taiwan film 
um, beyond our kind of regular Taiwan studies audiences? Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy um, that experience, doing a direct exchange with mm. audience. Either a very small venues, you know, with only one person, yeah. <laughs> or actually with a bigger venue, mm. you know, with the two hundred people. But I think the audience question really was fascinating and illuminating mm. as well. So I think you know not only um, enhance your own enjoyment of the film you watch or the subject you study, but also actually always give you new inspiration. And one thing I do also learn. And this is my reflection. I think actually for a niche cinema subject or, or just cinema, Taiwan cinema, if we want to reach a wider audience, either at home or abroad, mm -hmm. I think actually this kind of a exchange could be crucial right. um, because it really gives the audience a, a bigger context. You also help them to really understand um, where these films or the context come from and so they can appreciate a lot more whether or not they are you know very familiar with Taiwan mm -hmm. um, and I think that's actually also uh, one of the things we said earlier because Taiwan cinema that we have today often actually has a lot of authenticity from different angles mm -hmm. and so to to help to communicate that to the audience I think really, you know, through this kind of direct uh, e e exchange, that that really helped mm -hmm. in, enhance that kind of mutual understanding. Um, so the various experience I had, um, I, I suppose one thing I have pondered and and I, I failed on that one mm -hmm. is actually I took Taiwan cinema to an uh, English school uh -huh. once, and there were two hundred um, students. So I think actually try to choose the right film that was mm -hmm. very is a challenge and then you know to talk to them um, so I, I shouldn't say I failed I think it was enjoyable so mm -hmm. something to be able but just didn't I didn't get as much response as I was hoping for okay so I really hope if there will be other opportunities actually really get to talk to kids so, so what kind of Taiwan film do you think works best for let's say a, a British um, audience um, I actually don't know. No. Yes, and also I have to say, you know, I'm not um, a professional cur curator. No. So I think also you, you're limited mm. by the knowledge or the material available mm. to you. Um, but I do find um, certainly from a sort of a, a film screening tour I did with uh, Cape Number Seven, I find the response from audience um, quite. Different if if these group of student um, audience are sort of with very rich Taiwan China Asian understanding, mm -hmm. or they come from very mainstream film studies um, background, yeah. they they do give me very different um, mm. sort of feedback about right. the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, uh, earlier you talked about your uh, that you move into the direction of looking at uh, Taiwan cinema history. Uh, the, one of the, the big projects you've been doing over the last year or so is uh, bringing a tour of Taiwanese language, kind of historical cinema, and you've been taking it not only, only around, you and Chris Berry have taken it not only around the UK, but also to a number of European um, settings. So I was wondering how you felt um, about that kind of response. Because mm -hmm. uh, we, we showed two of these films here at SOAS, and the audience response was better than I expected. Um, the uh, the films created a really interesting uh, debate, um, and actually, the, at least the one we watched um, was actually better than I expected. It mm -hmm. was it was quite daring actually. Mm -hmm. um, so, could you comment on on the um, audience responses that you've found? Mm. Yeah, I think in terms of audience response, I agree with you. That was a, a, a real enthusiasm. Mm. Although I just say it's niche, so I think actually we also have to to. I think actually it's quality other than quantity, yes. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but that engagement with a, a different type of audience mm -hmm. through this tour, um, Chris and I both also learned a lot. Mm -hmm. um, often after each screening, we were exchanged by email about what kind of questions you, uh, the audience asked and mm -hmm. how we address them. And then we also learn from each other. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, when, if I get a question actually it's very much about politics, uh -huh. which we didn't expect, 
um, but you know, talking about Cold War, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so we did um, try to answer as much as I can. And while Chris also gets a very interesting question about asking him to do a compare and contrast between uh, Taiwanese language film and Mandarin language film. Mm -hmm. So his point of view also I find you know, very succinct. Um, and so actually this really is a learning experience, not only you know, from each other, also from our audience. Um, so I think with this response, we, we really think actually this is wor worthwhile continuing. Um, not only just continuing the screening, mm -hmm. but also we hope we can uh, get a research project going. Um, because for a film study, you know, basically we just say we can look at the film industry, we can look at film analysis, but we can also look, look at uh, audience research, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I think, the, the, the least done part of research. And for this project, um, when I was looking at the cultural democratization in Taiwan, I, I tried to tease out what Taiwan film industry was like mm. through looking at um, you know, earlier uh, film studios that purely focus on Taiwanese language film. And for this p uh, film tour, um, because we start to be able to go through as many films available, uh, available to us, so I also want to do a project actually looking at film analysis to understand um, you know how different kind of a, um, Taiwan or, or different issues were represented on screen. Mm -hmm. But you know a, another big project I think really is back to be done is about the, the audience. Mm -hmm. You know these audience that used to enjoy these classic films. If we don't get to them soon, um, maybe actually it will become really difficult in a few years. Time. So why do you think that topic hasn't really been covered much in the literature then? I think, uh, firstly, is availability. Okay. Secondly, I think it's to do with um, the, the perception of Taiwanese language film. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so for a long time, the Taiwanese language film really was seen as very cheap commodity, yeah. mm -hmm. um, entertainment, no value, no cultural value. Mm -hmm. And that's also, um, generally speaking, for Taiwan society prior to democratization. Um, were seeing film as entertainment yeah. rather than mm -hmm. cultural heritage. So I think one thing is the society's general perception, perception about cinema changed gradually and alongside um, democratization. Hence actually people start to reevaluate your own cultural identity and cultural heritage, including Taiwanese language cinema. And I think actually put all these things together, so finally you start to see more and more research um, but it's still a, a, a starting point. Uh, there's a vast amount actually to be done. Um, but in terms of audience research, because of the difficulty, so even actually for cinema study today, I think that's still one strand. I think fewer researchers mm -hmm. are willing to touch. Um, but I think actually from history point of view, cultural point of view, um, anything together, I just thought you know, that would be a really important dimension we can get into about the Taiwanese language cinema research. Mm. So I hope we can do something more comprehensive. And um, so one of your many roles is um, running the European Association. So from that angle, I mean, do you feel that um, um, research on Taiwan film within Europe is still a, um, a big topic? Are you, are you still um, getting enough abstracts on that kind of topic? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Taiwan cinema is being very popular. And I think, again, not only just from people who study uh, film studies, but also from Taiwan and from different disciplines. So, for example, I think you make a great contribution mm -hmm. to the study of Taiwan cinema. So I think actually, you know, sort of specific looking at politics in Taiwan cinema is something should be done. Yes. And, mm -hmm. I think, um, and also, again, different angles. So, so I think actually this is kind of multiplying rather than exhausting. And I think, um, you know, EATS, this network, is a fantastic uh, network that facilitates individual research, but I hope also, you know, that network will, will, um, will also actually, you know, yeah, it, it facilitates each other's research, but it, it also enhance. Yeah, so I think actually, you know, what individual will also bring in to make this association and network sort of become stronger and richer every day. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, um, we've covered a uh, huge amount of ground from, from your kind of earliest interest in Taiwan film through to uh, your, your most recent uh, research. Um, thanks, Minya, for uh, sharing your kind of passion for Taiwan film and research for Taiwan film. Thank you very much, David.